Hi everybody, this is Tina with Loving Life's Little Blessings. Welcome to my video today. I'm really excited today to be sharing with you guys these markers. I've used them a couple times in past videos and I asked if you guys would be interested in my thoughts on them and lots of you said, yeah, we would like to hear what your thoughts are on them. So I wanna say really quickly, I'm not a, I am not good at coloring. It's not my thing. It's certainly, it's not my favorite thing to do. Um, and so because of that, my thought process on these markers and what I'm using them for are going to be different than say like Jennifer McGuire or Christina Warner who are all, who do really beautiful work. So just keep that in mind. And then the main information that I got on these markers, I got from Jennifer McGuire's video that she did, and I'm going to link that video so you guys can watch it. It's really, when I watched Christina Warner videos of her using them, I didn't really want the markers. But when I watched Jennifer McGuire videos, then I, I started to like them more or want to look into them more. So it really does just depend on the way you color and what you want to use them for. So um, I used Jennifer McGuire's video and her blog post quite a bit. I made these. I purchased the 48 set and I got these on Amazon. Now I want to caution you to be very careful when you're bought when you're purchasing these. Even when you're purchasing them on Amazon, I found them for several different prices and these markers are not cheap. The 48 set, I think I spent $80 on or $90. I think I found them for $91 on Amazon. Um, I have found that on Simon Says stamps that they are twice as much. You can get the 60 set for, on, I believe it's on Simon Says they're listed for 200 or maybe it's this 48 set that's listed for 200 on Simon Says and then I've, I've been able to find them for 100 on Amazon. So I just want you to be really careful and look around when you're looking to purchase these. Like I said, on Amazon, there were several different prices and some of them were really outrageous. I found this set for $160 and I obviously didn't pay that. So I have the 48 set. I got it on Amazon. I have Amazon Prime. So that could have affected my price that I found on them. I watched Jennifer McGuire's video and I printed these. I didn't actually print them out because I couldn't get my watercolor paper to go through my printer. So I just printed out her little chart and then I cut out the name of the pen and then I just made this. I drew on my watercolor and then I stamped a heart image and colored it in. I did a watercolor with just... Um, or not a watercolor, but I used a water brush to blend it out. And then I used my Wink Estella pen. So you can see that this side is with glitter because that's oftentimes how I use that to um, color and stuff. So these are watercolor markers. So they're um, they're going to give you a watercolor. They're not like an alcohol-based marker, so they're very, very different than Copics. And the reason that I decided to try these and go with these is because when Stampin' Up! had the blendability markers, I really loved them, and they were alcohol-based. And I really liked them because they were simple. You had three colors. That's what you used to blend. There was no trying to figure out, figure out numbers or buying them individually. You purchase them in a set of three, and then that's what you could use to do your blending. And I really liked that. It made it really simple for me. And so when we no longer carried them, when they discontinued them and decided not to go with them, I really wanted a something to color with and I really wasn't sure which direction to go. So I know that there's Copic markers and those are alcohol based and those are what are going to give you that ability to really blend and that's kind of what I had wanted. But as I looked into purchasing Copic markers, I did not they're just too expensive and there's too many of them and it's just overwhelming to me. So as I saw people using these, I really felt like, well, maybe this would be a good 
a good color medium to invest in because you can do a little bit of the blending and do a little bit more because the color is really intense and it's a real brush. These markers have a real brush tip and so the detail that you can get it just looked like it would it would be better for what I wanted to do. So that's why I tried them. I only got the 48 set because I really wasn't sure if I was going to like them. I really regret that. I wish I just would have got the 60 set and been done because I do really love these. So I will be investing in getting the rest of the markers. There's 80 all together. So you can see by my little things here that the colors that I have you can see like I don't have a lot of pinks but then I have a ton of blues and then same thing with the greens it's like I have a ton of the greens but then not that many of the yellows so I really don't know the rhyme or reason of how these are packaged I really don't get it when I was doing the research on them what I noticed was the colors it had said that all the fluorescent colors were the ones that were in the 60 set and I thought well I don't really like the fluorescent colors I don't color with those so I'll probably be okay however the color names on these they're very weird they're very very weird so let me just show you like <clears throat> so this is cobalt blue right here which this does not feel like a cobalt blue to me this feels like more of like a cobalt blue um, same thing over here on some of the neutral colors There's one right here. So this is a mustard colored color. The colored name is mustard, but it really looks like more of a brownish color to me. And it's like set in the neutral area of the container. And so you really have to doing these swatches. I felt like was a real, you really needed to do that so that you can get an idea of the colors. Like this turquoise green, I don't really think of that as a turquoise green. That really reminds me of Bermuda Bay. And then same thing with the grays. This is light gray, the oatmeal color. I mean, it just, I don't know, the names of them do not, I really did not think that they were very accurate. And the colors are very, very different. Like this purple, is not what I would consider like a purple. This is a lilac and then this is a light violet, which is not light at all, if you ask me. So it really helped to do this. And then the other thing that I'm going to say is you really need to use watercolor paper or a thicker cardstock. So I've used these on craft cardstock and it's thicker and it worked well. These do not work well like on whisper white cardstock or like thin cardstock. So um, I, I'm going to use this stamp set. This is the Christmas Cutie stamp set. And I want to show you what I did as I was playing around with these. And so you can see I started over here trying to, I was going to do this one. And I was just using a, where are the markers that I'm going? So these I think are what I'm using. So I was using an aqua painter. Um, you can use a paintbrush with just some water. It just depends on what you're comfortable with and what you feel comfortable using to, to paint or to get the water. You don't have to add water to your images. You can just color these and you're gonna see when I do the coloring, you can just add the color to the image and it's fine. You don't have to add any water. But if you wanna get the shading, if you wanna do some shading, you're gonna wanna add water. So this is where I started and I kinda just started trying to play around and feel how it felt. I've used these a few other times, but to like really color in an image and get shading, this is where I started. So then I didn't really think that this image was going to give me the ability to really use them and, sh and do some shading like I wanted to do. So I moved on to this image and then you can see I'm just kind of playing around with color here. Um, it's very easy to blend them and play with them but like I said the colors that they say that they are are really weird so on this one I really was just playing around with the color and trying to figure out which colors would go together so now I have this little guy and what I thought I would do is go ahead and speed up the coloring I'm going to show you a little bit of what I did and I'll be using these colors right here 
So there's just, I'm gonna use these two colors to do some blending. And it's turquoise green and light blue. And then I'm gonna use this color for the hair, which is the mustard color. And then I have a gray that I'm gonna use. I'm just doing two colors on them. And then I have this color I'm gonna use on the face. So I'll speed it up and I will show you how I'm going to color this and then I'll show you the card that I attached it to. Get about a place It'll take creation, imagination Try to draw outside the line Let us see inside your mind You'll find inspiration All I'm saying is you can do it I want to hear you say So, so far you can see where I have blended out color, where I've added more color, and these markers really give you the ability to do that by just adding a little bit of the colors. And the tricky part is just figuring out which colors work really well together. I'm really liking these two colors together. This is the light blue and the turquoise green, and I think that this is giving some really good uh, color the color I want now I'm just going to do one color and I'm gonna use this and blend it out and this is a gray color this is the blue gray so I'm gonna add some of the color real close in these creases and that's where it's gonna be darkest and where I'm gonna pull my color from and then you can see like on the scarf, I'm starting over on one side and I'm kind of flicking the marker over and then I'm gonna blend it out the other way. Hey, if you wanna play, make it about a place. It'll take creation, imagination. Try to draw outside the line. Let us see inside your mind You'll find inspiration All I'm saying is you can do it I wanna hear you say
believe, take a chance, leave the dance And run with what is in your heart Let the magic start, you're in charge yes, Alright, so you can see how I was able to get some shading even just by using the watercolor. Now I didn't finish coloring him. I'm going to show you a card that I made uh, where I did finish coloring him. Here it is right here. And I did the, I used the same colors. I used the this color for his hair and instead of blending it out, I really didn't blend it out. I just added the color And you can see that that is beautiful as well. Like you can use them without using them with water. And then the other thing that I did is I took my Wink Estella and I went over the entire uh, teal color, blue color areas. And the color will begin to move again when you use your Wink Estella because that's obviously wet. Your Wink Estella is wet. And so then the color kind of moves a little bit with it. But I really think that these work best with the Wink Estella, which is nice because you can get that a little bit of shimmer. Maybe you can see it better on this one. There's a little bit of it. So I really actually like using it with the Wink Estella better because I just feel like it blends everything out really well. So the great thing about these, I feel like you can control where the color goes down and then you can do your blending. Whereas if you're just using the Aqua Painter and like you're picking up ink from the stamp pad, I don't have a stamp pad sitting up here. How, you would, how I would normally watercolor with Stampin' Up! ink, you would open up your ink pad and then you would grab some ink or you'd put re-inker there and you'd pick it up with this brush. I feel like that doesn't give you as much control when you're coloring. And this, you can really use that pen to put down the darker color where you want it and then blend it out and it gives you the ability to make it a little bit more, to do a little bit more depth to your coloring. So. Overall, for somebody who does not particularly like to color or who isn't going to do it all of the time, I think that these markers are really great. And like I said, I'm going to go ahead and invest in all 80 of them. I think that if I had more of the colors to choose from, it might be a little bit easier to figure out which colors go best and there's definitely a bit of a learning curve to these you're going to want to stamp some images and play around uh, not only with the color combinations and what's going to work but then the feel of them and right here as I was doing her hair I didn't like the color that it was turning out and so I just started playing with that color and like figuring out how it was going to spread on this paper and how much water worked with it and how much water you know how if I needed less water so I really like these they are an investment again I know I talked about that at the very beginning of this video but they really are an investment and they're definitely not necessary you're going to be able to get all the colors that they have for cheaper than you can get all the Copics but I really just encourage you to figure out which kind of coloring you want to do I'm not ready to do alcohol based coloring I just am not ready to dive into that and figure it out and I've already done water coloring and so I'm already pretty familiar with it and so I felt like it would work better and it did so I made this card I just put it together after I was done coloring him and I used the snowflake punch and stamp set and then I used a sentiment out of that same stamp set right here and I just attached that to some smoky slate cardstock. And then this is some of the vellum that we have in the holiday catalog. And then I just have some rhinestones on there. And I do really like the way it turned out. I did some heat embossing around the edge of the watercolor uh, just to kind of pull out that red a little bit more. And I think it came out okay. So I will have links in my coordinating blog post for you guys of... Uh, where I found them on Amazon, as well as Jennifer McGuire's video. She does a much better job of explaining all of the technical aspects of the markers. I just wanted to share with you guys my view 
of using them from not necessarily a perspective of somebody who colors all the time or enjoys it. And um, so that's kind of what I was sharing with you guys. So thank you guys so much for coming by and hanging out with me for and hanging out with me, you guys. And I'll be back later this week with uh, more projects for you guys. Thanks so much. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me until the very end of my video here. I wanted to mention that I have a ton of information over on my coordinating blog post, which you can get to several different ways. You can click right there on visit my website and it will take you right over there. There's lots of information about these markers. I also wanted to share with you two other ways that I've colored in the past. There is a uh, card up there that I did with four different ways to color a stamped image and that card does not use these color brush, these real color clean markers. Sorry you guys. And then the next video does uh, have I did feature those markers and that is in my fall shaker cards So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today and checking out my video I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will talk to you guys again tomorrow with a project life video. Have a great day guys